Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, it's your boy Zach. I wanted to start off in this screen just so uh, anybody who wants this seed can follow along with me. Uh, notice it's negative 204-809-3232. I started this world on classic size, small biome, and then expanded it after that, after I'd explored the classic size map. So that is the key to getting the world to generate the way I have it. And here we go. And uh, I wanted to go into today's episode basically just showing off a lot of the stuff that I've already worked on since our last episode. Uh, and it's kind of going to be a seed showcase. Uh, so this way, instead of going into a seed and seeing the stuff, uh, but then, you know, you get the coordinates, but then you're not really sure where it is or, or whatnot. Uh, this should make things a little bit easier. Uh, do I have a map anywhere? Mm. A map, a map, a map. Well, I can make one, so that's not a big deal. Uh, let's do that real quick. Uh, we're going to need, what, iron? Oh, I need this to gonna take it with me. Uh, we have something special lined up for that. Uh, iron, redstone, and a compass. Well, I have all of those things. So let's just get it all together. Oh, no, not, not iron, redstone, and a compass. What am I doing? You sit. Put that back, put that back. I have the compass. Oh, I have no more room for iron there. All I need is an empty map and... Uh, Oh wait, there we go. Bam. Let's just use this one. This will give off all the coordinates that we need uh, to find things. Okay, we, we, we should not have done that. Okay. Now, back, back to what we're doing. So let's start by going over here. Now, I don't know if you guys remember this, uh, but I changed it up a little bit. Uh, we no longer have the enchanting station in here. It's basically a little brew shop, a little coffee stand. You can get some potions. And then you can go down here. And here is where I'll do my enchanting. And then that is still a work in progress. We're not going to go down there. But yeah, full enchantment setup, anvil, all the good stuff. Uh, I figured I'd have that over in here. Let's take that bone out. Close it back. Voila. So let's put this in our hand so we can wander around with our coordinates. So right now you can see this is the main map. This is the starter map of the classic size. So this is the very edge of the map. And if I go to any of the spawners that I found over here, we do get off the map. So you would need to expand the world before you actually got to the uh, skeleton spawner that I have over here. But we'll go visit it real quick before we continue on our journey. So I know you guys will remember, if you've been watching the videos, uh, this is the one that I decorated to look like an actual skull on the inside. Let's go down and down and down. I'm going to work on the interior here more, but we got caught up with the double skeleton spawner, which we'll get to here in a minute. Okay, so as you can see, the coordinates for... This skeleton spawner are what, negative 589, 42, negative 305. It's really hard to see, but that is the coordinates for it. And that is this skeleton spawner that's behind this wall. So uh, you can kind of do the math there. And let's get out of here and continue on our path. Go find some more stuff. So like I said, this this is sort of a seed showcase, but instead of just showing you, you know, a barren map, I figured I'd show you what all you could have if you just know where to look. So let's fly over here. And actually we'll go visit this area. our jungle right over here.
Uh oh. Ouch. Ah, we'll just go in there. Hopefully we don't die from any uh rogue bad guys in the area. This place is always a danger. We have lots of pandas over here. Uh, pandas were spawning in the area once I found it, but I, of course I didn't come over here until after the update. So uh, as far as the bamboo is concerned, uh, I found it in another area of the jungle and brought it over here and fed the pandas. So as you can see, the jungle is in uh, just north of the main map. Uh, roughly negative 202, 97, negative, Lord, I cannot read that, 804, looks like. So that's where the jungle is in this map. Once again, you won't have it on the original map. You'll have to expand the world to get the jungle. And then if we just take off over here, and come down this way, you can see there's another spawner here, which I found. This was a zombie spawner, I believe. Let's see, you gotta follow the cobblestone, the moss stone landmarks. That was how I figured it. And I've still been digging this one out. Uh, it is not a functional spawner trap or a functional grinder, if you will. Not yet. But there it is. So, zombies, for those who want that. But, of course, if you're on the main map, which we'll get to here in a second, uh, there's a th probably the best zombie spawner you could ask for because it is uh, above ground. Is it this way? Yeah. So, let's get on out of here. And let's continue on our little trip. Is that a riptide one? Good. We're going to need it. Let's get in the water and take off. And over here is where the double spawner is. And this is a massive tree that I built for no real reason other than just to build a giant tree. And that is a giant tree. And I have a little story about that. Uh, I was flying over the area during a lightning storm once. Not that long ago. And on top of that tree were the four horsemen. And for those of you that don't know, that was uh, four skeletons on skeleton horses. And all the skeletons are armored up and uh, looking to kill you. And out of all that, I actually killed them and saved one skeleton horse, which I then rode home. It was a long and crazy journey through the ocean. Literally, I had to ride the horse through the bottom of the ocean. And uh, that was strange. But we made it, and uh, we'll go visit Lucky in a second, because that's his name. Uh, now, here we have the double spawner. So right behind this wall is a double spawner. Uh, let's see if we can read it. Negative 37, uh, 39, negative 508. That is the coordinates for this. And it is a double skeleton spawner. Let's see? 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 Very cool stuff. Oh no. Where did that block go? Where did that block Okay. Whew. Sometimes that really can mess you up. So the double skeleton spawner was really probably one of my favorite discoveries uh, because it has brought me tons of XP and tons of bone meal. And the bone meal has been uh, great to... Uh, further enable me to get a working sugarcane farm and lots of uh, bone meal and golden armor and stuff. Now the cool thing about these spawners, and I'm going to show you, is that you get these rare drops every once in a while that have double enchants. Like see the unbreaking one, unbreaking one, or unbreaking two, unbreaking one. Obviously you can't you can't get that through regular enchantments. Same with, uh, like this, blast protection and fire protection. Uh, fire protection and regular protection. Look at this one. Two unbreakings and two protections, both level two and level three. That's just a rare one. Uh, and then projectile and blast protection. So those are rare 
uh, which I'll probably fix up and save and put somewhere uh, on an armor stand just to kind of have as a trophy. Oh, wait, and before I do that, let me show you my version of a sugarcane farm. <laughs> so it works off of uh, basic, you know, observers and pistons extending, breaking the sugarcane. Uh, however, I went one step further, and whenever I really want to kick it up a notch, I put some dispensers and I fill them up with bone meal, which I am not going to do right now uh, because I have no use for it uh, because I have all the sugar cane that I am going to need for a while. Uh, but yeah, that thing just super pumps out sugar cane. And I'm going to turn this into an automatic bamboo farm. It's going to extend much further back uh, and look a little different, but that'll be an auto bamboo farm. Then we'll have the auto sugar cane. I'll probably do an automatic kelp farm back here. Basically all the uh, plant life. We'll do a melon farm. We'll do a, a pumpkin farm. Uh, we're not going to do wheat, carrots, and potatoes because I think those are better uh, in overworld farms rather than this little underground base. So back to exploring. Uh, let's get out of here. It looks like it is dark. So uh, we'll take a nap. Or should we just brave it? Let's just brave it. You know what? Let's just, let's just go for it. Let's just take off running. And then take off flying. So let's fly this way. Over the bridge. Over here to our next thing we've been working with. This fantastic iron farm. Which has definitely uh, made life a little easier. So, uh, I've already been crafting a lot of the iron into blocks. But, yeah, usually what I'll do, which I'll probably do today, is I have to go to work. The kids are in school. So, I will literally just sit here and AFK the entire day. Uh, and this thing will drop much more iron and poppies. And, uh, yeah, good to go. So, we're not going to set up that now. Because we have more to see. Now let's fly over here. That was where the village breeder was, but we took it down once we wanted to build the iron farm. Here is the end. This is where your stronghold is. So let's show that off as part of the seed showcase. There is my trophy from killing the dragon. Uh, we just built some water elevators because this stronghold happens to be at Y level 6, I believe. Which is way down there. Way down. So it is just a long trip. I'm going to eventually build a uh, a reversible elevator. One where I can just press a button and it will switch to up. And then press another button and it will go back down. That will make life a little easier. But here's the end coordinates. So let's get in some light. Let's see. So what? 43. And then... Is that a 2 or a 7? Let's see. It is hard to read that. I think it's... Oh, man. I wish I had a better map. But, yeah, you can tell where the stronghold is. It is... 43, uh, man, one, 124, 125, and Y level 5. So 45, uh, 45, 6, 125. That is where roughly this stronghold is. So it's way down in the world, way down in the bottom of here. Uh, definitely suggest <laughs> making a water elevator to get yourself up and down in the long run because it will take a while to travel. So now let's continue on our journey. We'll go the old school path. We'll just follow the follow the walkway I built. And we're going to eventually make this a little nicer. Uh, it'll have more amenities. You can see the fire tower coming up, uh, which once campfires become a thing on the PlayStation, we're definitely going to be uh, adding some nether rack and some campfires to the top of that so it's actually producing flame. 
but I don't want to do that until then. Because there's nothing worse than, you know, building up a bunch of cool stuff and then having to tear it all back down because they added cooler blocks or cooler features. And that temple will eventually uh, grow as well. Uh, but not up. It'll actually grow down into the ground as part of the lore for defeating these evil beings of the night. Now here is where we took one of our villagers, and that is why we brought this name tag, because he is a cleric that trades rotten flesh, and uh, we definitely like to have that near the zombie farm. So let's go with, how about we name this guy uh, Frankenstein. Frankenstein. There you go, buddy. You're forever there. And he is awesome to have over here because uh, he has a pretty good rotten flesh trade as well as a gold trade, which both of those things are free right here. So let's uh, let's give an example. Let's let the rest of these come down. Kill. Kill, kill, kill. Anyway, we get some rotten flesh. Uh, take the rest of that. If I have any gold bars, I'd bring those with me, but I don't. Anyway, we spend some hours here while we collect up tons of rotten flesh. Then we walk it back upstairs, bring it back over to old Frankenstein, and trade for some emeralds, which we can then get lapis and redstone and bottles of enchanting. Glowstone's not really a big deal because we can get that from the blaze farm. But you get the idea. You get the idea. So that's nice. Uh, this world also originally had a desert temple in it. Uh, the desert temple was over there. Let's see if I can find exactly where it was. Here's the ice castle I built. Which is a pretty cool little thing. I loved that it was a desert biome with this actual bit of uh, grass right there. That was just a cool feature. So let's see. Where was that desert temple? Uh, definitely in this area. Yeah, look. There it is. I left the X marks the spot, so to speak. So if we go down there, you can see that's the original uh, chests and all that. See? I wonder if there's anything down there. I bet there's not. Oh, look, there is some stuff. We're going to take this stuff. Because uh, we, we didn't have a use for it in the beginning, but we got a use for it now. Especially this rotten flesh and the spider eyes, which we can use for potions. And that gunpowder. Uh, we're just going to leave all the sand. We definitely do not need all that. <laughs> and we know that's pretty much a death trap in there, right? So we should never come back here again. Ever. Let's, uh, let's cover that back up. Leave the one marker where we know where it is. As usual. There we go. And I think, aside from the things that uh, we have, but we just don't go visit very often. Let's see. Let's fly over this way. So we line ourselves up with that track. That's the key. Okay, so it's right there. This way. And it's a it's a pretty good ways over here, but I think it's nice and I think it's worth it. Just keep flying this way. And at some point you'll see something that's familiar.
some melons. And this looks right, huh? You guys know what this is, huh? It's our flower forest. And there's our house that we built uh, not too, too long ago. Um, looks like there's some random birch leaves just hanging out over there we'll have to take care of. So this was just a house that I built. Instead of having uh, the few little villagers I have stashed away in there, I was going to move them and uh, tear down that house and build something else over here. And uh, we used, like, scaffolding and some green leaves and some glowstone to kind of light up the area down here. And then up here, we got, like, the bed hidden in the floor. We got the uh, glowstone lamp right in the middle of the room. There's nothing fancy about this house. It was just sort of a... A getaway and sort of a base away from the base um, but I just kind of wanted to come over here and, and show it off to you so the most important part of this area is the flower forest so let's go over there Oop. we'll just kind of jump in the wall in the water and float so here's the flower forest which you're definitely going to want to take advantage of in your world. Uh, you can see uh, 1,229, 69, 123. Those are the coordinates for this. Uh, so once again, start off in a classic world, and once you expand and you come over here, you can have all the dyes you ever need, especially if you've already got the, uh, the bone farm set up, because then you have all the... Um, oh, gosh... Uh, bone meal that you'll ever need. So let's fly away, right? Definitely gonna build something cool in here, you know. Don't know what yet. Don't know what. This way. Let's get a little height. And we can just pretty much glide our way back down. So I think the last thing I want to show you about this seed is where you start off in the world. Because, uh, like that zombie farm that I showed earlier, that is on the main island. Uh, here's the coordinates for it. And it is literally right beneath me. I mean, it's above ground. It's right beneath me. 25879. And then I'm at Z4. But, you know, that, that's the important part. So you got that. You got the zombie farm. Uh, there's a few other uh, spawners uh, located in the area. I can assure you of that. Oh, there's also an abandoned mine shaft. There's a couple of them, actually. The first one is right here. So here we go. Abandoned mine shaft right by that desert temple uh, that I built, I guess, right by the zombie factory. So 264, 65, 119 will kind of get you in this area. So that's important. And then my favorite part of this world, where I don't spend nearly as much time as I used to, uh, is actually at spawn. Because, especially if you start it right now, spawn has a village at it. Uh, it's in a little island with a village, uh, which is nice to have. And then... If you set up your nether portal, where I did, over here, which I just did because it was convenient, <laughs> you literally spawn in the nether not far from uh, the nether portal. You can actually see the bricks right there. Uh, so it's, it's very close to that, and there was soul sand and uh, nether wart over there, where you can kind of see that little torch. 
So right when you spawn into the nether, you have access to all the things you need. Uh, and of course, in the nether fortress, uh, it turned out to be a really good one in the fact that it was surrounded upstairs completely by netherrack. Uh, now, as far as mob spawning rates, that was bad. But there was a blaze spawner right here. So right into this. Uh, and then if we go over and out, there are a few other blaze spawners in the area. Actually, there's just one. Just one blaze spawner in the area. Oh, gosh. I forgot that I had made that hole there. Let's try that again. So hopefully there's no uh, wither skeleton. Actually, let's hope there are wither skeletons waiting for me over here. Because I need some more heads. Mm. Break out the old bow. Can I get you from here? Ooh, yeah, what a shot. What a shot. And that is a wither skeleton right there. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, did you drop a head? Drop a head. No. Are we cool? Okay. We're cool. So there's another blaze spawner right there. Right there. Ooh. Let's not go that way. So you, there's literally two blaze spawners not far from where you spawn. And then that's how I kind of get around into my other areas. I'm going to leave you alone. Eventually I'm going to set up a pigman farm here. That's happening. And a wither skeleton farm, because I'm tired of doing the old manual run arounding hunt. That's a little bit annoying. But yeah, so that is the world as you can have it. Uh, that was all the things I kind of wanted to show you. Now, there are other things like ocean monuments littered throughout the area. There is also, ooh, man, uh, shipwrecks. I've found at least three shipwrecks, maybe four. Uh, so there's that. Uh, there's just all kinds of good stuff in this world, man. Just plenty of stuff. And I found this through, uh, through a YouTuber named Catman Joe. Go check out his videos. He's a really, really cool guy, really informative. Are these guys angry with me or are they just checking me out? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Let's go over here. Let's, let's check something out real quick. I guess they're cool. I mean, they don't seem to be attacking. Right? Okay. Alright, my dudes. Alright. There we go. Yeah, I know wood is probably not the best material to uh, be builded with here, right? <laughs> it's not like this place is full of fire and death. And if you see where we come out... The magic tree. Let's get out of here. Oh, I forgot to show you guys Lucky. Oh, okay, we gotta we gotta go back and show Lucky. What is that down there? It's a chicken. Oh, stinking chickens. Any mine carts? Yeah. Let's take a ride. Let's go visit Lucky, and then we'll take off and end the episode at the base, where it all begins, where it all starts. Where if you decide to join into this world, look, you can see one ocean monument uh, over there, just in the corner, and then there's another one that way. It's really not that far. You might be able to see it when we make the corner. Uh, well, that's a thing. Give me this. Keep on riding.
Uh, you can't really see it over there. It is hard to see. So in this, this there's also a village right over there, I should say. It's on the main island. So there's at least two villages on the main classic size world map that you can access in the beginning. Now, what I would suggest is when you spawn, stay on that island. Stay over there, especially if you start it now, because the village and pillage update will inevitably make villages spawn differently, uh, preferably in that cooler style with the jigsaw blocks. And you don't want to mess that up. Uh, this one would be messed up because it would spawn before the update, but then you could always, uh, you know, just hang out here, build yourself up a nice little house, gain all the resources you can. Lucky, what are you doing, dude? Why are you out of the cage? Come on, let's get back in the cage. I do love me a lucky man. He's he's a cool, cool horse. A little different than the rest of them. A little bit different. That's okay. That's what makes him special. And I don't, I don't know why you're out of the pen either, buddy. So that is my world in a nutshell. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, little tour. Uh, I hope you guys come back and see me build some more cool stuff. I have a lot of really good plans for this world. Uh, some of the next ones will probably be a lot more time-consuming. Uh, but with things like we're going to finish off the main island into one massive base uh, that will extend over that way with sort of a little desert city going that way. Uh, it should be really awesome uh, because I've gotten to the point where I'm happy with a lot of the farms that I have. I have plenty of resources. Now we just need to build some cool stuff to explore, right? So uh, anyway, check you later. Have a good day. Zach is out.